Happy New Year guys! In the previous video, I talked about overcoming a low step one and how I got more than 10 interviews despite that. One thing I talked about is having an improvement in step 2 CK. So in this video, let me share with you how I improved from a step one of two tens to step 2 CK score by 38 points, achieving my goal of 250s. With the change to pass or fail for step 1 this year, there is a far bigger weight given on step 2 CK when it comes to reviewing of applications. So focusing on getting a good step 2 CK score is still, for me, very important. Just a backstory, I did well on my step 1 assessments, and I was actually expecting a score of at least 230s for it, but I was completely devastated when I received my score. I almost wanted to give up on my journey, but thinking about it, I tried to look at it as my motivation, and so I took a step back after a few days of wallowing and rest, and looked at my study process, and tried to change it so that I would not make the same mistake in my step 2 CK. So here are my changes. Number one, resources. I have a video dedicated for the resources I used for step 2 CK. And what I realized was that I used a lot of resources, especially passive ones for step one. Like I used First Aid, Pathoma, Boards and Beyond, Sketchy Micro and Farm, then some more in-depth books for anatomy and biochemistry that I used during med school. Then one pass of UWorld. I was overwhelmed and way too overwhelmed with information and doing passive learning. But the thing is, step exams need practice because the way the questions are for steps are not really straightforward questions. It is usually in clinical scenarios. I didn't do much. I kept on memorizing and doing videos and listening on explanations for all this stuff, but I didn't do much practice. I just focused on passive learning when I should be focusing on active learning. I just did at least a block a day even on my dedicated and I think it wasn't enough. So for step 2 CK, I focused on questions. I did two passes of UWorld and more and focused on this as my sole resource. Then I did more questions with Ambus QBank as well when I was done with UWorld and felt like I was memorizing the questions and answers on UWorld already. During my dedicated, I was doing three to four or five blocks a day, especially weeks before my exam day. It was a game changer. I was used to answering questions, even long questions, which helped me during my exam day. So number two is different approach to your world. I also have a dedicated video on how to approach your world for step two CK and exactly how I did it. Excuse my poor recording system there, so sorry for that, but I think that is helpful. So with my step one, I just did questions for the sake of saying that I practiced and focused on getting the right answer, which I memorized for some reason, then analyzing the questions, and then analyzing the explanations. I just read the explanations, then put them on my notes, but not really analyzing explanations and why it was correct or incorrect. I did a completely different approach for Step 2 CKU World, where I analyzed questions and analyzed each explanation, approaching it as differentials for the topic being discussed. I know it is quite hard to picture it out of this brief explanation, but you can take a look at that video for a more detailed explanation on this. So number three is Simulation Day. Simulation day is one full day on which I simulate the full day of exam from my start of block one to my breaks to the end of the block. That day I did eight blocks with 60 minutes of break for the whole day. I did that every Saturday of the month, I think two to three Saturdays of the month until my exam day. I didn't do this first step one, but it was exhausting. A full day of just answering questions was very exhausting back on my step one, and I was in shock with how tiring it was during step one, but step one was even shorter. So for step two, just to have some gauge of my endurance and how I will be doing for my breaks, and for me, doing this simulation day helped a lot. It was, of course, still very, very exhausting, but I was expecting it. I, I wasn't rushing through my breaks because I already know how to use my breaks during my simulation days. So I also practiced with my mask 
every time because apparently it can be distracting with the mask on so I want to get used to it. This may be a bit of a stretch but you can at least do once a week before the exam. So number four, rest days. I actually didn't see the importance of this until I did a three week reschedule and dedicated for my step two CK. So before, even with my step one study, I didn't have a regular rest day. I will have a rest day for maybe once or twice a month. My study schedule is also not regular, where I would study for about 8 a.m. to 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. For me, during that time with, of course, the mindset of a medical student, the lesser the sleep, the better, because I felt like I had more time to study. But it was actually a downslope at the last hours of the day because I was already too exhausted. So I changed my schedule for step 2 CK and I tried to have a regular one where I'll be waking up at 7 a.m. then study till 11 p.m. and then gave myself time to sleep and breaks for meals in between. I also did a very strict no study but rest day every Sundays. Step review is a marathon and not a sprint and I got to have insurance and plenty of strength that I need but my body and brain can't just do it with lack of sleep and a jug of just coffee. Adequate rest but of course not too much is very important. Before I get to be very guilty when I sleep more than 4 hours and have a full rest day but it was also counterproductive having lack of these. And number five is note taking. For step one, I wrote my notes in a notebook just like in the lectures during medical school. What I hear and feel very important, I write it down. Thing is, I wasn't really able to go back on my notes during my dedicated, and since it was handwritten, it took time for me to find notes where to go back. It wasn't very efficient for me, so for step two CK, I completely changed my game. Everything was digital. I find it more organized and easier to go back when needed. So for the most objects, I was able to review my notes again during my dedicated. I think this is a small part of the study process, but changing my note-taking system made it a lot more effective and efficient. To recap from my previous video, I used Notion for my notes. You can check out how I made my notes digitally in a more detailed manner using the link below. Last but not the least, knowing when to take the test. For step one, I got a good 240s on my assessments apart from my last UWSA where I got 220s. It was a week before my exam, but I still did the exam because I was thinking to myself, I was getting 70 to 80% of UWorld on my blocks, so I thought it would be good enough. I was already so tired. I was also already so tired of studying. Well, it wasn't good enough. Point is, never take the exam until you are ready. Okay, one can argue that you will never feel ready for the exam, which is partly true, but you can actually gauge it with your assessments and confidence level in answering QBanks. It again happened to me in Step 2 CK, where I was getting good scores like 260s and 240s on my assessments, then I got 220s on my last UWSA 2. I moved my exam for another three weeks, then brushed up on my weaknesses. I just didn't rush on it because I know that this exam is a make or break for me. And it worked for me. So, of course, come exam day, step two was still really exhausting. I couldn't say that I was confident at all during my exam. I wasn't. I was actually very scared. And the wait time from when I finished my exam to getting the results was very, very, very agonizing. I had crazy thoughts of failing it. But I can say that I was somewhat at ease at some point that I knew I prepared well. So there you have it. Step 2 CK is hard and there are a lot of horror stories about it. But after all the studying and getting tired of V-World, I can say that the effort can be worth it. Just keep swimming. If you have any questions, please comment down below and I will try my best to answer if I can. I hope this was helpful and good luck everyone. Happy New Year again.